Today I'm gonna to show you how to make this delightful chocolate mousse pie. It is beyond the beyond. So silky, creamy, indulgent, and just plain old decadent. And yes, there is a mound of whipped cream with more chocolate shavings on top and a crispy, crunchy, beautiful, handmade pastry dough shell. Let's get started. This pie crust is super easy and you will fall in love with it. It's gonna become a favorite, I promise. Two and a half cups or 300 grams of all-purpose flour into the bowl of your food processor. 300 grams. There we go. People ask me all the time, what if I don't have a food processor? Here's the deal. You get the dry ingredients, whisk them together, and then the butter is frozen. Freeze your butter, grate it with a cheese grater into the dry mixture, add in like mix it up, add in that ice water, mix it by hand, or you can even use a knife if you want, and it'll come together. It's really easy and you get delicious giant chunks of butter in it. It bakes perfectly. So that's the deal if you don't have a food processor. I only got mine this year, so FYI. Okay, half a teaspoon of salt and four tablespoons of sugar. You can change the amount of sugar if you want. Use a little bit less, and then there, just a sprinkling. I'm using less today. Move it around and now let's put on the processor and give it a whiz. Whiz it up just to mix it up. Now it's time for the butter. Cubed butter out of the fridge. Cubes like, you know, a little bit less than an inch. One stick of butter cut up, let's plop it in. Just, you know, separate them out a bit so they're not gonna clump up in the food processor. There we go. Rest of the butter in. And we're gonna give this a whiz until we have like mm, pea-sized-ish pieces. Okay, lid on. Pulse it a couple times. Oh, nice. Let me show you what it looks like. So we have some larger chunks, a lot of tiny chunks. That's okay because we have to add our ice water in and we still need to have little pieces of butter so that it's nice and crispy and flaky. We're gonna drizzle in some ice water I'm probably gonna have about four tablespoons. So, drizzle it in, pulse, pulse. Let's see how that looks. If you bring it together with your fingers and it comes together, it's done. This is almost there, but I'd like to add in just a little bit more water. Pulse it up. Okay, that'll be fine. We're gonna dump this out onto a pastry mat now or just a floured surface. Okay, let's dump this out. Okay. This is one of my favorite parts because it looks like a crumbly disaster, but it's not. <laughs> it's pie crust. So we're not gonna knead it, but you kinda wanna press it together and knead it <laughs> just once or twice. And then I'm gonna use my pastry mat to bring it together, so. Just fold it and press down, fold it again, and press down. And then do that the sides too. Now I have my pastry dough. I can add this into a plastic bag, roll it out just a little bit, and then let it chill for about half an hour. It'll all come together and become much more pliable and coherent. So into a plastic bag you go. I'll be right back with the chilled version. Flour that surface, flour this as well. Roll it out now. You might have to give it a few minutes on the mat just so it warms up because if it's too cold, it'll be brittle and crack a lot. So if you see that happening, give it a minute. Make sure you move the crust around as you go and if it does crack, just pinch it together. Don't let it rest. <laughs> You want to have a good margin for your pie tin you're using. And now you can fold it up or roll it up, whatever you like. Plop it back in there. And here's the deal. You want to push down, not stretch the pie crust too much. Because if you stretch it, it's going to be shrinking back up when you bake. All right, so I have a lot of excess. I'm going to trim some away. I'm not doing like a really fancy pattern for this. I think it looks beautiful rustic. So what we're gonna do is just pinch it under and do a traditional thumb pinch. So it says fold this under. If you notice some pieces are too long, just trim them away. 
That's perfectly functional, but what we're gonna do is use our big thumb and our other thumb and index finger in this push together to create a nice little uh, rustic pattern. We have some scraps to save for later, then go into the fridge and be a delicious treat whenever you want. Just cover them up. Now, what do we do with this? It's gonna go into the oven at 425, but you have a couple options. I like to cover mine in tin foil after you dock it. So docking is just poking some holes in. Gotta let the steam escape. Then, so dock your pie crust, then add in some tin foil, and you can add parchment paper in between too if you'd like. So the tin foil is not touching your pie crust. And I'm pushing it against the edges. It's basically gonna prop my pie crust up. This glass is really slippery, and that butter starts to melt, so things start to sag down. I know it's happened to lots of you before, including me. So this tin foil is just gonna help prop it up. So my foil is pressed up against the edges. I'm gonna bake this at 425 for about 10 minutes, remove the tin foil, brush on an egg wash, redock, put it back in there, and make sure it gets out golden brown. My pie crust was in the oven for about 10 minutes. It might have been in there for a little bit longer because I was distracted. That happens. It's okay. Here's what we're gonna do. An egg wash. So one egg, and like a dash of cream, if you wanna measure it out, a tablespoon. Now just mix it up with a fork, and here's the deal. Take out this tin foil, did an excellent job of propping everything up so nothing slid. Let's brush this all over with the egg wash. The egg wash is also gonna form a nice barrier between your chocolate mousse and the pie crust, so the pie crust can stay nice and crispy. I keep forgetting that you have to dock after the egg wash because the egg wash will like close those little holes back up. And when I made one of these last night, <laughs> it was like a giant balloon. It was so frustrating. Now, dock your little heart out. All those frustrations of the day. You might think I'm crazy, but I will be tenting this as well because now I really want that center to brown up and not have a burnt edge, so. Feel free to baby your pie crusts. Just add some foil around the sides. We're gonna pop this back into the oven and just keep an eye on it. I'm gonna reduce the temperature to 375 and watch until that center is nice and golden. Then remove the foil and it'll go in for a few more minutes. I'll be back once it's ready. <laughs> for this chocolate filling, which is basically a delicious silky mousse, we're adding eight, eight and a half ounces of a nice dark chocolate into a glass bowl, and I'm using a scale to measure it out. So, about nine ounces, being generous. Now a quarter cup of coffee. This is gonna make a delicious ganache, but the coffee's really just gonna accentuate the chocolate flavor. If you wanna skip it, you can go ahead and use a quarter cup of brandy, or you can just use some cream or water. Now we're removing this, taking it onto a pot of simmering water, and the water will steam heat this up, the water's not gonna touch the bowl. Plop that on there. We're gonna let this simmer until the chocolate is mostly melted. All right, let's separate those eight eggs. Eight eggs is a lot, but this is gonna make a lot of filling and I have to tell you, they add so much creaminess from the yolks and fluffiness from the egg whites, you are gonna be in heaven. Okay, eight eggs. I know it's a lot, but you know, it's a big thing. Don't mix up the egg whites and the egg yolks, which is something that I, as an absent-minded baker, do all the time. So egg whites, egg yolks. You can get a little bit of white in the egg yolks, but you cannot get any yolks in the egg white, so be careful. If you are clumsy, like I can be, you might wanna separate this out into a separate bowl and then add the whites in because any yolks in here will be an issue. It's an inhibit the meringue. Okay, we're in the home stretch, people. <laughs> And by the way, yes, this dish has raw eggs in it. So if you're uncomfortable with that, move along, people, move along. There's not gonna be any alternate to this. If you want, you could make like a chocolate pie with some melted chocolate ganache like we did, and then you could just fold in a bunch of whipped cream, and that'd be pretty good. This is gonna give you a much like silkier, lighter, almost fluffier, pie, and I love that about here. But there's alternates too. You can make magic happen, okay. Now we're gonna set these whites aside for later, and then concentrate on our egg yolks. To this bowl, I'm gonna add in one half of a cup of sugar. Okay, 
Now we're gonna beat this in a standing mixer fitted with a paddle attachment on high for like maybe four minutes until you get a really beautiful light lemony color, which I will happily show you at the next cut. So lock that in place and on high, four minutes. Several minutes later, let's take a look and you're gonna see an amazing transformation. Look at this color. This is like the most beautiful pastel color that I always wished I could wear but couldn't because of my complexion. Okay, so now this is gonna get some beautiful chocolate added to it. Let's get that in there. Don't worry if your ganache thickens up while it's sitting around. That's okay, just plop it in. It's not gonna drizzle in beautifully, but you know, still gets in there. If you check out the optional ingredients in the blog post, you'll see that you can add in brandy and an orange liqueur. I love that combination for this, but my husband said, why does this taste disgusting? What did you put in here? <laughs> and this is actually one of the favorite things he likes to eat. So in this version, I will be leaving those out also for the children, etc. But those are delicious. If you feel like adding those in, add them in. Don't have brandy? Add some bourbon. Lots of choices, people. Okay, mix it up on low, medium, high. <laughs> All right, let's show you what this looks like. Doesn't even matter if there's a little bit unmixed at the bottom because this will be mixed a bunch, a bunch and a bunch and a bunch more. That's the consistency, that's the color, and mm, that taste is really nice. I can taste the coffee, but for me, the coffee is amping up the chocolate. It's not like I'm tasting a mocha mixture. Okay, set this aside now. We're gonna be coming back to this though, so leave that paddle attachment in there and let's get on to that meringue. All right, back to the eight egg whites. This time we're using a whisk attachment and you can't walk away from this because here's the deal. When you're whisking up egg whites and it's a French meringue without all the hot sugar or whatever happening, if you over mix it, they become kind of like little flyaway, brittle, sad peaks and it's not really gonna be usable. You wanna have soft peaks that have more of a body and they're more forgiving because you're gonna be folding those into that chocolate mixture. So don't walk away. Okay. Add in like a nice pinch of salt, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. And I'm using about two tablespoons of sugar. Just drizzle it in. Fine mist of sugar. Now keep your eagle eyes on this and watch it until they're at the soft peak stage. Let's take a look at this. This is one of my favorite parts of baking. Even if you're in a horrible, rancid mood, you can just look at that fluff happening, watch the mesmerizing spinning, and it takes you away. So here we have some nice fluffy clouds, perfect. This will lighten that mousse up and it'll make it feel like you're eating health food even though you're just downing chocolate. Okay, take about a quarter of this beautiful, fluffy, cloudy egg white situation, this floats, and plop it in there. So we're gonna be kind of like tempering the mixture almost. You're gonna lighten it up so when you fold the rest in, it's going to be lighter and not collapse all those air bubbles. So just Fold it in, but don't be too precious about it because most of these are gonna pop, but some of them won't. And then you can see it's really lightening up now. If you want it to be homogenous, go ahead, get that whisk out and just give it a quick whisk. <gasps> this tastes delicious. Now, the rest of this goes in, so look how strong that is. <laughs> That's a meringue. Right, let's plop that in there. So now, Fold that in, so from the bottom, go to the top. You're basically making these circles going into the bottom, and then you're bringing that heavy stuff up. Folding. Okay, once you're almost all the way there, you can give it a quick whisk, but don't worry about it because we still have to add in our whipped cream. Just whisk, whisk, whisk. This is so like light and fluffy. We're gonna set this aside now and then go back to your dirty old meringue bowl and let's add in a cup and a half of heavy cream for whipping. This right. is gonna help our pie set even more and make it silky and rich and delicious. Whipping cream is one of my favorite things to eat. I'm a monster. <laughs> 
Add in a tablespoon of sugar. This recipe is kind of like sugar to taste, so if you're like, oh, it's too sweet already, don't add that sugar in. You can add less. The only thing you have to add the sugar in for is the egg whites. You need like a, a tablespoon and a half or so just to help it whip up. Let's get all this out here. I don't want to waste any. Let's put that back onto the mixer. Add that whisk attachment back on and let's whip it up. Just like with the egg whites, I know this is really basic, but you can't walk away from whipped cream. It's like me when I ever make scrambled eggs and I get distracted, I come back and it's like, like a frittata and I hate frittatas. So here, if you over mix that whipped cream, it begins to curdle and it's not gonna be silky and amazing. So keep a close eye on it. As soon as you get those soft peaks, stop. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I got distracted checking my Instagram. <laughs> Just in the nick of time. That's perfect. This is what I mean by nice soft peaks. You can see here, creamy, delicious. It's not really strong though. Soft. Last step, we're folding in the whipped cream. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> Same rule as before, just fold bottom to top, bottom to top. Oh my God. <laughs> I could pour myself a cup of this and just eat it. And I might do that. Right, let's give this a really quick taste just to see what it's like. Oh. Get a big spoonful. That is heaven on a spoon, oh my gosh. Let's put the spoon down, even though, oh man, the whipped cream really, really does a lot for this. Okay, so you probably know this, but when I make these videos, I have to make like a bunch of different versions of what I'm showing you so that I can swap things out quickly because the kids have to get up from their nap. I have stuff to do, comments, whatever. So last night I made a bunch of these pie crusts for the swap outs, but I don't have all the same container. So this one is like a little smaller, especially for all of this <laughs> filling. So just know that if you have the bigger, deeper pie, which is what I'm gonna swap to, it's gonna be like almost the perfect amount. You'll have a little cup extra for you to snack on and I guarantee you will snack on it. With that said, let's add this in here now. This is like, <sighs> oh, do you see this? Give it a shake. If you wanna be a little bit extra, go ahead and melt some more chocolate for a chocolate ganache and swirl it in there. That'll be amazing. So I scalded some cream and I'm just gonna add it in like that. Happen to have some shaved chocolate. And let's just mix it up. There we go, nice and creamy. Just gonna pour just a little bit extra, totally optional. You can also just add some shaved chocolate on top. This is gonna go into the fridge for at least six hours, maybe overnight. This is like a perfect overnight dessert to bring. And I'll be right back. Right before serving, go ahead and whip up some more whipped cream. I'm gonna do about a cup and then like a tablespoon and a half or two tablespoons of sugar with a little vanilla. That's optional though, but for me, a chocolate pie really needs like a giant mound of whipped cream on top. Into that mixer. It's the holidays, so you don't have to worry about any of these calories. <laughs> Add in your sugar. Give it a wick. Little vanilla. And keep an eye on it. All right, I see beautiful little like clouds of whipped cream. Let's take a look. Soft peaks, perfect. I will not be liking this because that's unsanitary, but you're, you're gonna be tempted to do that. Okay, let's put a big mound on this and add some shaved chocolate for the win. <laughs> I've cut myself a dainty little piece and I cannot wait to try it for you on camera. Look at this. Oh, it's just, it is, that's a crust on the bottom, nice and crunchy. This should be illegal. Oh my gosh. That is like this pure, creamy, chocolatey amazingness. And the crust is so crispy, crunchy, flaky. You've got to make this, this you just have to make this. Try it out with a little bit of brandy, some you know orange liqueur if you want, so many different options, even some cherry liqueur, ooh. Thanks for watching, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe.